Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be installing Ubuntu Linux on VirtualBox using a Windows 10 host computer. We'll first download Ubuntu Linux, and then we'll create a new virtual machine, and finally we'll install Ubuntu Linux on that virtual machine. If you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. I'm here on the Ubuntu.com website where we're going to go ahead and download the Ubuntu Linux image. We're going to go under the download section and then we can go ahead and select between the 18.04 long-term support version or the 1910 which is the latest and greatest version available right now so i'm just going to go with the latest and greatest version and just select 1910. it shouldn't take long but uh, it will pop up automatically at the bottom here as you can see we've begun downloading ubuntu 1910 desktop by default it is the 64-bit version that gets downloaded if you need other versions of ubuntu you can always go back to the download section and then hit the Ubuntu desktop and see the alternative download section right here. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the VirtualBox app. It's available at virtualbox.org if you need to download VirtualBox. But I'm going to hit the start menu and then I'm simply going to go ahead and search for VirtualBox on my machine and start it up. Also, if you want to learn more about VirtualBox, check out my walkthrough and install video. It's a great place to start if you're a beginner. I'll make sure to go ahead and put a link in the description below. VirtualBox is an open source software for virtualization of machines. Simply put, you can emulate a computer through the use of this software. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and select New to create a new virtual machine for Ubuntu Linux. And I'm just going to call it Ubuntu Linux. And as you can see below, we're getting autofilled with the type and the version. And since we have the 64-bit version of the image, this is the perfect selection and Ubuntu is what we're installing on this virtual machine today. The machine folder is where it's going to save the virtual machine. If you want to change this location up, you can. What we'll do now is select next once we got that all filled in. Next, we get to select our memory size or the amount of RAM for the virtual machine. It will tell you how much available RAM you have and most Linux distributions recommend at least two gigabytes of RAM in order to run. If you do have more available you can go ahead and specify more. I'm going to go ahead and do 8 gigs since I have up to 32 gigs available. This should be plenty for the virtual machine to run. Select whatever you can that's above 2 gigs and make sure that you're not in this red level on your virtual machine. After you got that selected go ahead and hit next. Following that we're going to go ahead and create a hard disk which is a virtual hard disk. And you can see right now that that's the option that's selected. We're gonna go ahead and hit the create button. And following that, we're gonna go ahead and select a hard disk file type. So VDI is native to VirtualBox, so that's the one I'm gonna go ahead and select. And it is selected by default. You can also select between the other two, which just makes it a little easier to migrate to different machines if needed. But the default's fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. We're asked if we want to go ahead and dynamically allocate the size or make a fixed size. Dynamically allocated size allows you to go ahead and only use what's currently necessary by the virtual machine instead of putting a fixed size which will automatically divide a little section of your hard disk completely devoted to the virtual machine. With dynamically allocated it will build as the virtual machine builds in storage space and files as well as data. So it's usually best practice to go ahead and select the first option, and it is the default option. Now it isn't limitless, you'll get to decide what the limit is here in the next screen. So we're going to select next, and now we get to specify the size of that virtual disk. So I'm going to go ahead and put at least 32 gigs available for this, for this virtual disk that we're creating. I suggest doing 32 gigs or more on any, on any Linux distribution. If you have more available, that's great. You can set up to two terabytes. Go ahead once you have things selected here for your size and hit create. It'll take a moment and now we have Ubuntu Linux, the virtual machine created for us. VirtualBox is developed by Oracle and thanks to them we have a very powerful and free virtualization software here which is more than suitable for most computers. Virtualization just refers to the process where you create a virtual machine in an emulated environment such as VirtualBox. And a virtual machine is just a platform that runs an emulated computer with the hardware and resources that are available alongside your main computer in this virtual environment. Before we start up the new virtual machine that we created for Ubuntu Linux, let's go to settings and just change a couple things around. In our system, under the motherboard tab, we can enable or disable EFI, which really toggles between UEFI, 
BIOS and MBR based BIOS. So uh, with newer computers, UEFI, EFI BIOS is pretty standard. So in order to keep it to the latest and greatest, we can go ahead and enable that firmware support. Next, we'll go under processor. If you do have more cores available, feel free to give it to the virtual machine so it can use more than one core. If you only have the one, you can of course just keep it there, but it will help the system run a little smoother. Finally, in the storage space, we have the Ubuntu Linux VDI attached to a SATA controller. But right now we have a controller, which is IDE, that has an empty disk available where we can go ahead and attach the image that we just got done downloading for our Ubuntu installer. So we're gonna go over here to the right hand side and select the disk and set, choose a disk file. And here in the downloads folder, you can see I have Ubuntu 19.10, the desktop version, which is an AMD 64-bit architecture version. So since my virtual machine is of 64-bit architecture for Ubuntu, I'm gonna go ahead and select this and hit open. Once it's populated, we can go ahead and hit okay. And now we can go ahead and start our machine. And once you get here, you'll see that we've reached a grub menu for the installer. So we can go ahead and start installing Ubuntu on this virtual machine. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the scaled mode here. So we can go to view and then hit scale mode or control C in order for a shortcut. And that'll just allow us to go ahead and drag this and make it a little bigger to see. So as you can see here now, we can see things a little better. And we have a few options here. We can try Ubuntu without installing it, install Ubuntu, or install Ubuntu with the save graphics mode. So this is the option you wanna do if you have NVIDIA graphics drivers, but of course we don't, we're doing this on an emulated computer. So we're gonna go with install Ubuntu. Give it a few moments just to start up here. The resolution might be a little wonky until we get things installed fully, but for the install purposes, it'll run just fine. So the first thing we're asked is what language you wanna go ahead and run the installer with. English is fine for me. You can select whatever language you want to use and then hit continue. After that, we're asked for the keyboard layout, English and the English US standard format is great for me. You can also test your keyboard here. So if I type in QWERTY, I get out QWERTY. So everything seems to work just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Following that, we have a few options. The normal installation, as you can tell, it comes with the web browser utilities, office software, games, and media players. If you want the minimal installation, it just comes with a web browser and some basic utilities. You can download updates while installing Ubuntu, which will save you time after the installation. And also if you have graphics or Wi-Fi hardware that require different proprietary drivers, you can install third-party software. We don't really need to do that for the virtual machine. Everything is emulated. So we can go ahead with the normal install as well as downloading updates while installing Ubuntu. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And if you're following along and installing this on a virtual machine, you will have this option here, erase disk and install Ubuntu. And that's the option that we would want. What this is gonna do is erase the disk that we just created, which has nothing on it in the first place. And it will install Ubuntu completely on it and not allow anything else to be on there. You have two more options here. You can encrypt the new install, which will just require an extra step to enter in a password as well as a username password. So basically it's just a little bit of extra protection with the security key. Otherwise you can use a LVM with this new installation or select both. And what an LVM does is it just allows you to manage your storage space a little easier. Most of the time I do suggest this for virtual machines, but you can do without it as well. So the default options here are fine for me. Next, we're gonna go ahead and hit the install now button. And finally, it's just gonna tell you, hey, these are the changes we're gonna be making. And this is the disk that it's gonna be making it to, as long as you're doing this on a brand new virtual machine. And following the steps in here, we are confident that we just created a new disk, so we can go ahead and hit the continue button. A few more things for the setup. We're gonna go ahead and select our territory. Today, I'm gonna to be in Los Angeles, and I'm gonna hit continue. Following that, we're gonna go ahead and put in our name, as well as a username. I'm gonna correct this here. And this is just the name that the computer knows you by. This is the username which you're gonna to use to log in. And this is your computer's name, so other devices will see this name when searching on the network. Now you can go ahead and set up a password for that user and confirm that password. You can also select whether or not you want it to log in automatically or require a password on login. I'm gonna keep the default and then hit continue. 
And now the install has begun. It's going to take a little bit here. Ubuntu is one of the most popular and user-friendly Linux distributions out there, and their main focus is offering a great user-friendly free solution to Linux with a great community for support. It deploys a GNOME desktop environment by default and is available in different editions including desktop, server, IoT, and even embedded. This is a great place to start if you're new to the Linux experience and you're looking for something with great support and a lot of stability. There's a lot of distributions out there that are built off of the Ubuntu platform and add their own tweaks and it's one of the best Linux distributions to go ahead and start out with. And once the installation is complete on the virtual machine, you'll see this message here where it tells you it's complete. We'll go ahead and hit the restart now button and things should reboot. We're asked to go ahead and remove our installation medium. Since we don't have one in the computer and it's really in our virtual optical disk, we'll just press the enter button and let things restart. It may or may not restart back into the installer. We'll see real quick here. Another neat thing about VirtualBox is that it's available for most platforms, including Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. It really doesn't matter what system you are using because the layout of the VirtualBox doesn't really change, so you will be familiar with it on any host platform wherever you choose to install it. And as you can see here, we do have our login, so we're going to go ahead and select our user, put our password in, and let's go ahead and log in. And here we go, welcome to your newly installed Ubuntu Linux operating system on your virtual machine in VirtualBox. I'm going to go ahead and just skip through here. No, I don't want to send my system information to Canonical. I'm going to select Next, and I'm going to keep Location Services off, hit Next, and just hit Done. And we're finished officially with the install process. Again, welcome to your new desktop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put it in full screen mode here. You can do Control F and hit Switch. And now you can see that my resolution is a little bit messed up. I'm going to go into display settings, see if I can't find something close to what I'm using. And this 16 by 10 should be good for me. I'm going to go ahead and keep these changes. And this is probably the first thing that I do whenever I get a new virtual machine installed. Now you might not be able to find your proper resolution. This is because you need to install the guest editions. So one thing that you'll always want to do after a fresh install of a virtual machine is use the guest edition CD in order to install the tools given to you by VirtualBox, which will help the virtual machine run smoother with its operating system installed and allow for proper display rendering as well as resolution support. The processes do change a little bit between Linux distributions, so I'll let you look up the install process for your particular distribution, but you'll want to attach the CD by going to Devices and hitting the Insert Guest Edition CD image. Sometimes it's as easy as hitting run and being able to run the software. Let's go ahead and just give it a shot real quick and hit enter. And it looks like it's actually installing the modules properly. So that's a great thing. Sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle with different variations of Linux distributions. But let's go ahead while that's installing and look around our desktop here. So up in the top left hand corner, we have activities that we can select from and it'll just show us what's currently running. And let me just press enter to get out of that window. You can also search for various different items on the Ubuntu desktop. And we also have a couple things here on our desktop background, as well as on the left-hand side, we have Firefox, the default web browser, Thunderbird, the file manager, Rhythmbox, the multimedia player, LibreOffice Suite, as well as Ubuntu software, their package manager, help if you need it, Amazon, as well as the guest editions CD that I just inserted. If we hit down here, we can see our applications and you can look through various different applications in here. We do have more available to us. And then finally, if we close out of that, on the middle, we can get to notifications as well as a calendar and see the current date and time. On the right hand side, you can change the volume, look at what you're currently connected to, which is the wired virtual adapter. And then you have the current user logged in as well as getting to settings, logging out and shutting down the computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and power this off since it's successfully it's install installed at this point. After you do install guest editions, you'll want to make sure you reboot anyway. And that's really about it. I have VirtualBox now with an Ubuntu Linux install on it. I hope you enjoy using it. 
And I hope you also enjoyed this install of Ubuntu Linux on VirtualBox. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, and please feel free to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.